zone. What about the Kentucky defense, Sick? Here's a, here's a team that's not known for its half-court defense. It's more built around the press. Well, you know, they utilize the trap so well. When you talk about Kentucky, the multiple defenses, their defense also Nine, two, keeps Kentucky. to some offense. We watch them against court UCLA court. going to a full-court trap. There they are playing the passing lane, and there's the conversion off the trap. They do this so well. Now they got full-court pressure with passion on the baseline. Now he takes away the passing angle. He's got him in a coffin corner. They try to throw a diagonal pass. And we're going to see again another situation as we watch them take the ball to the goal. We watch them getting some movement, UCLA. But the bottom line is they really do a superb job of taking you out of your rhythm, taking you out of your tempo. And I think ultimately that kind of trapping situation could create problems for Utah. Rick Majerus has seen highlights like that or lowlights from losses in the NCAA tournament in the 90s to Kentucky. Had him close last year. Didn't have Andre Miller down the stretch, but Kentucky beat Utah in the regional final. Welcome back to San Antonio as we cut down to the championship matchup between Utah and Kentucky. Joined by Rick Barnes, the coach of Clemson, who saw up close the Kentucky Wildcats. But way back in November, they had just come back from Maui. You played in a kind of a near-empty arena in Phoenix. Beat you by 15, but you had them up five in the second half before that big run. How do you stop the Kentucky runs? Well, I'm not sure if you do once they really get going. They've proven they can come from uh, being way down and, and certainly win basketball games. But I think the difference in their team right now back then, Jeff Sh Shepard has really stepped up and shooting the ball well for them. Turnovers were a problem for you, as they are for so many Kentucky opponents. Well, I think tonight will be a big key. I think they will work hard at taking the ball out of Andre Miller's hands. I think that if I were them, certainly I would want to do that. Well, you look at Utah right now. We talked off the air about keeping the ball out of Miller's hands, but how do you do that, Rick? Well, one, they could really obviously try to deny him the ball, just chase him all over the floor, find him early, and, uh, and really maybe run at him, make him give it up, and not let him get it back. Wayne Turner, backcourt, point guard, not a good foul shooter, but... You put pressure on him. How's he improved, or what do you think you've got to do if you're Rick Majerus going after what Turner brings to the table? I thought it was real interesting to see how uh, Rick played Ed Cota Saturday. A lot of people try to pressure up on Eddie Cota. He chose to back off a little bit. I think he'll do the same thing with Wayne Turner and see if Wayne Turner can make some jump shots. Is it tougher to get ready as a coach for a team like Kentucky? You're not trying to stop one superstar. They have so many components, though, so many different guys who can, who can step up and make big shots, even if it's a Cameron Mills or somebody off the bench. You know what? I think really, really right now for Utah, I think it's pretty good for them because, you know what, they'll, I think, will attack, certainly attack Kentucky like they went after North Carolina, trying to take away the point guard and the inside game. Rick, points in the paint. Muhammad, solid player, gets an early foul trouble the other day, but in the second half, 17 points in the second half plus the overtime. Big matchup inside with Doliak and Muhammad. It they is a big Clemson, didn't they? Hey, it's a big <laughs> matchup, Digger, but you know what? Think about what they did to Antoine Jameson, the player you're in college basketball. That, I don't think, is the real matchup. I think the real key tonight, they're going to go after Shepard, just like they went after Shimon Williams, make him put it on the floor. Scott Padgett has to step up and make some shots. I agree with you. We talked about that earlier in the show. I think Padgett, who's been very unselfish, has got to step up. But what about on the other side when you look at Miller? He's also, also going to be challenged by the penetration of Turner. Well, he is, but again, I think that if he can give enough to keep him in front, I mean, I think he's going to make Turner pull up and shoot the ball. What about Tyron? What about fatigue? Because when you look at Miller, he's going to have to play a lot of minutes. How important is the depth for Kentucky? Well, you know what? All year long, I've had to answer that question about North Carolina. They got here, and I'm not sure it is a factor with the TV timeouts. And this time of year, with 40 minutes left to go, I don't think fatigue will be a factor. I hope you're fortunate enough at some point to coach in a championship game. But what would you try to tell a team like Utah that's played with so much poise to get to this point, but hasn't experienced that final 40 minutes? I mean, you're nervous as a coach, right? Well, one thing I'm going to say, I understand that Dick keeps calling them the Cinderella. I don't think they're Cinderella. I really Who's don't. Cinderella? I thought you, uh, Utah was the Oh, no, 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 thing. not at all. Yeah. I said they're not a Johnny come lately. They've been top ten in America. You've got to be watching another show. Well, all I know is I read <laughs> USA Today, and they tell me you guys are the best. Oh, yeah. And that's wow. I'm glad to be here with well, you. Well, they're right for once. Yeah. <laughs> we thank you for dropping by. Clemson coach Rick Barnes lending his analysis of the championship game, Utah and Kentucky, as the countdown continues. We've got more to come from the Dome. Kentucky fans making their way among wow. the 40,000 to watch the championship game tonight.